What's up guys, this is Eric from GameShampoo.com. I'm here again with another weekly news update. Today is Sunday, February 16th. Okay, got the date right. Um, and we're going to be going over the news from the last week and then going over some of the upcoming releases from the next week. And, uh, you know, the usual. Um, with this time, the one twist being that there's a big focus on the Elder Scrolls Online because we finally were able to put up our PvP coverage of the game, which consists of a preview of the regular PvP coverage and also a guide to succeeding at PvP so far as the beta is concerned and like the mechanics of the beta and stuff like that. Um, so there's a lot of Elder, Scroll, Elder Scrolls Online stuff up. Um, like I said, the first thing you'll see on the news page is a guide to playing PvP in Elder Scrolls and kind of flourishing at that. Um, you know, not to really go over too much that's covered in the guide because it is kind of fairly lengthy um, and it has multiple points, but uh, points that we cover in both the guide and in the preview are that you're going to want to get yourself a mount because the world of um, Totally Cyrodiil, totally blanked on that name for a second, the world of Cyrodiil is really massive and there are, like, waypoints that you can teleport between, but you're going to have to run between your faction's base and, like, the base that you're trying to capture, or, like, the fortress that you're trying to capture, whatever you're trying to do. You're going to find yourself running a lot, and that's really tedious if you don't have a mount. So you want to get a horse or something like that before you can go in, even though technically you don't have to have one to go in to a PvP. And uh, we talk about using siege machines and using those to kind of attack a fortress or a base in tandem with soldiers who are on foot, so, uh, you know, give you a little bit of strategy uh, as to how to utilize the siege machinery in conjunction with, like, you know, having some friends guard you and then having some others go into the base and attack them, and you kind of like covering them and stuff like that. Um, then there's the PvP article itself, the Elder Scrolls Online PvP Experience, it is called, that is up on GameShampoo.com slash magazine as our all the rest of these articles, by the way. Uh, the Elder Scrolls Online PvP experience, we have some more exclusive new screenshots of the uh, beta up in the article, and those are coupled with some tips and tricks and um, just overall opinions on the PvP, which I have to say I wasn't quite as crazy about as the PvE experience, so it is a completely different experience, and if you're an Elder Scrolls fan, but you're not necessarily like huge on MMOs, you definitely want to come by and read those impressions, compare them to the PvE, and kind of figure out where you're going to be spending your time. If you are an MMO player, you might want to read the PvE uh, article, which has been up for a week or so now. A um, little more than that. It's been up since the 7th, and uh, you might want to read that and kind of figure out how ESO differs from a normal MMO, because it is not quite the experience that you're probably used to with, like, WoW or Rift or whatever. Um, so let's see, I think we have some more. Yeah, we have eight exclusive Elder Scrolls Online screenshots, which were posted about a week ago. And then we've got an Alliances Guide, and we've got the first 20 levels of the Elder Scrolls Online um, giant preview. It's like 22 paragraphs or something like that, um, which was all posted before, so that stuff is still up there. It is still, um, you know, still covers the same beta and all that stuff, um, but that covers the PvE, and then we've got the PvP stuff, which is newer. Um, so Battlefield 4 is getting an expansion. Uh, it's called Second Assault. It's already out on the Xbox One. It has been out there since November. However, that's the result of, like, uh, you know, one of those exclusivity deals that Microsoft has been so crazy with signing lately, basically meaning that uh, Second Assault is exclusive to Xbox One and will be coming out very soon for PS4, Xbox 360, PC, etc. Um, a Second Assault DLC will come out on February 18th, which is this upcoming Tuesday, and uh, is the same day that I believe Strider and something else are releasing on uh, digital storefronts. Um, and a second expansion was announced called uh, Battlefield 4 Naval Strike, which will obviously focus on the 
kind of increased naval efforts that DICE has been putting into the game. You know, they have those uh, synchronized waves between players so that if you're in a boat or a jet ski or whatever, like, the waves that you're seeing and the waves that will be impacting the trajectory of your vehicle should hypothetically be the same as the ones everybody else is seeing and interacting with as well, which has been causing a little bit of, I don't know, freaking out on the part of the game uh, after launch when you're uh, in a boat and sometimes it just, like, you know, you're zoomed in and then it, like, it just zooms you out automatically or, like, it just kind of, like, pushes you under the water or whatever to try and catch up with the synchronization of the waves, so, um, it's not perfect, like pretty much everything else in Battlefield 4, but it's cool technology at least, and it's kind of cool to see it being utilized and focused on a little bit more heavily in the next expansion pack. Um, so, I, I, I have the game on the PS4, and I'm not completely sure offhand what Second Assault consists of, but uh, Naval Strike should definitely be focusing more on sea combat, which is interesting. Uh, Microsoft's head of PC development has left the company after only six months. Uh, we can confirm that Jason Holtman has left Microsoft and we're grateful for his time at the company, Microsoft told Gamma Sutra. We wish him the best in his future endeavors. Uh, Microsoft originally hired Holtman for the specific purpose of making Windows a more attractive and more manageable platform for PC gamers. And he said at the time, I will be focusing on making Windows a great platform for gaming and interactive entertainment. Uh, changes that have been made since he has come on board and prior to his leaving include, most significantly, probably the shutdown of Windows or Games for Windows Live, or at least the impending shutdown of it, which will leave some games presumably, like Dark Souls, without servers, um, which should be interesting, while others have already kind of migrated over, like Bioshock 2. Um, but he is gone, and he is to be replaced soon, presumably, uh, if not already replaced. And that's maybe a little bit telling about how Microsoft does stuff on the PC. I don't know, they have, they've never been super dedicated to the PC since the Xbox kind of came into its own. So, maybe that's just another sign of that. Um, what do we have next? Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, is going into open beta soon, and the details have all been announced by Square Enix. The beta will consist of two phases. The first phase will last from February 22nd through March 3rd, and the second phase will last through April 4th and uh, all the way through April 7th. Those dates are going to be based on Japanese standard time, so it's not going to be perfectly lining up with, like, midnight over here, or midnight on the East Coast, or whatever. That's going to be lining up with the dates in Japan. Uh, the beta will be available to everybody who has a PS4. You don't need PlayStation Plus, and you can download it through the PlayStation Store, just like any other demo or any other game or whatever. However, a character wipe will occur after Phase 1, but not after Phase 2. So don't get too attached to your characters in Phase 1, and, um, you know, you will be able to transfer your stuff over to the final game from Phase 2, which will occur literally right before the game actually hits retail and digital storefronts. Uh, players who create a character in Phase 2 will be able to import that character. Players who will, players will be able to transfer data from the PS3 and PC versions of the game to the PS4 in the beta. In the final build, all players will play on the same servers. So that means PC, PS3, and PS4 players are all going to be playing together. And you can kind of transfer all your stuff from PS3 to PS4. This works similarly to how it did with Assassin's Creed or Call of Duty or Battlefield. Uh, the transfer period will begin on April 11th. And um, basically you put your PS3 disc into your PS4 console you can go on the PlayStation Store, and there's a specific item that you have to get called, like, the uh, Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn upgrade, if it's anything like the Assassin's Creed upgrade or the Battlefield upgrade, and that'll be free, and you can only download that code, uh, or you can only download that if you have a code from the PS3 version and the disc from the PS3 version. And, of course, once you update 
from PS3 to PS4, you will no longer be able to put the disc of the PS3 game into a PS3 console and play it. You can only play it on the PS4, but you'll be benefiting from like upgraded performance and upgraded graphics and all the other cool stuff that's going to be on the PS4, sharing and stuff like that. All PS3 accounts can be transferred to a PS4 game, and uh, users transferring their accounts will have early access to the game from April 11th through April 13th. The PS4's upgraded features include uh, 1080p graphics, PS Vita remote play, share support, mouse and keyboard support, and unspecified touchpad support. I'm assuming for like map navigation and stuff, but it's not really clear. So, um, you know, if that stuff sounds attractive to you and you own the PS3 version of the game already, uh, you know, you might want to upgrade. It's a pretty simple process if you have a PS4. That's kind of clutch. Um, but if you've got the hardware for it, it's a very simple process. So, uh, those dates, again, are February 22nd and what was the other one? April 1st, 4th, totally blank. Yep, April 4th. A PlayStation Plus user has discovered how to get free PS Plus pretty much indefinitely and has confirmed to have free PlayStation Plus through the year 2033. Uh, there is a loophole with the a current promotion going on with Outlast right now where you can get 14 free days of PlayStation Plus and if you use this loophole, you can extend those 14 days indefinitely. You'll get thousands of emails, but all of them should confirm that your PlayStation Plus subscription is going on until like 2050 and is totally free. Uh, so this guy contacted VG 24 seven and he is quoted as saying, once you accept the deal, which is the uh, 14 day trial offer. And it's worth noting that you do have to, be new to PlayStation Plus. You cannot have an existing Plus subscription and use this uh, exploit as far as we know. So uh, once you accept the deal, you are allowed to keep extending the 14 free days for free once prompted after confirmation of the free purchase. All you have to do is keep pressing X and you keep getting 14 free days added to your free subscription. The hundreds of email confirmations from Sony all say zero dollars and zero cents. Um, when we wrote this on the 13th, which was on uh, last Thursday, it had already been an ongoing kind of issue for a couple of hours, and as far as I know, Sony hasn't said anything particularly about fixing it just yet. That said, they may have quietly fixed the issue, um, so your mileage may vary, but know that there are people out there who now have free PlayStation Plus for, like, decades. And, uh, you know, give it a shot. It's worth a shot. Uh, EA is refusing to acknowledge problems with the Battlefield 4 launch. Uh, we have a rock, rock paper shotgun uh, source quoted as interviewing um, EA's Richard Hillman on the, uh, the Dice Summit red carpet. And he asked about, you know, the rough launch and complaints that people have had. And Hillman essentially dismissed all that stuff as noise. So he, he says, I think there's a lot of noise about the game, but some of that was a function of our surface area. The more customers you have, the more noise becomes available. We did things wrong, we know that. We're gonna fix those things. But we're gonna try to be smart about what customers want in the future. But I'm not willing to accept, and I don't think most of my customers are willing to say, it's a bad product. I wish I didn't buy it. That's not the conversation we're having now. I think what we're hearing is, you made a game we really liked, we would have liked it a little better if it didn't have these problems. Um, so basically RPS was you know, continuing to pressure this guy. The interview was really short, he kind of cut it really short and walked off. Um, he continued to pressure this guy about SimCity as well as Battlefield 4, and um, you know, basically asked, how, how has this impacted your development process going forward? Do you think maybe you need to give developers more time to make games going into the future, or like, you know, have a better communications process between EA and DICE, or EA and the various kind of developers under that umbrella, or, you know, what do we do to fix this problem? Um, 
to which Hillman essentially replied, no, there is no problem. It's, you know, it's Dice's fault. Not ours. So uh, the exact quote is, the team got to ship the game they wanted to. I don't think we really pulled it out of their hands. Um, so, you know, that explains everything. Dice wanted to ship a broken game that people hated that would uh, force them to stop work on Mirror's Edge 2 and Star Wars Battlefront and Battlefield 4 DLC so they could sit around probably working overtime to fix the hundred or so glitches that were on the known glitches page while getting a stream of hate mail from all their fans and getting shit on by the press. So, you know, maybe next time don't want to do that, I guess. Um, on the other hand, we have more or less had confirmation that EA has pulled the game early, or they did pull the game early from DICE to get it to retail before Call of Duty Ghosts. Um, you know, one of the testers has been confirmed as saying that, and we got that on GameShampoo.com slash magazine as well. Um, you know, interesting to see their outright denial of like really public failures like you cannot deny that the Battlefield 4 launch was in pretty much always except for the uh, the sales of the game and the mainstream reviews a pretty huge failure but uh, those two things specifically the former seem to be what EA cares about most right now uh, Nintendo Canada is running an interesting contest for the upcoming release of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. They have basically crafted a giant cube of ice and filled it with bushels upon bushels of bananas. And it is your job, should you choose to accept it, to guess how many bananas are frozen inside of this cube of ice. And if you get close, or if you answer correctly, you could potentially win a ski trip to Whistler Blackcomb in British Columbia, along with a Wii U console and a copy of Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. The game is looking pretty good. We had a lot of fun with it at Comic-Con over uh, the summer of 2013. Kind of slightly forgot what year it was for a second. And uh, we're going to have a review of that game for the Wii U up very soon, so look out for that. Or in the meantime, you can... Try to guess how many bananas are in this giant cube if you live in Canada. The contest should be ending pretty soon, wrapping up uh, before the game launches on Friday. So head over to Nintendo of Canada's website if you live in Canada and you're interested in the contest. They have more details there. Okay, uh, Naughty Dog is brainstorming for The Last of Us 2, as well as for potential new IP. Um... There, the team has kind of said in the past that they weren't going to be working on The Last of Us 2, but it seems like they may have had a change of heart after all the success behind the game. Um, and, you know, they're, they're brainstorming. The Left Behind DLC just released right around Valentine's Day, so, you know, they're, they're kind of in a good spot to look back and see what succeeded about the project and what didn't succeed, and kind of channel all that into a sequel, or just channel it all into a new IP, whichever ends up being preferable for the team. So, uh, speaking to Eurogamer, Naughty Dog's Neil Druckmann said, We have started brainstorming some stuff. To be honest, some of them are sequel ideas, and some of them are brand new IP. We've spent the last few weeks brainstorming new IP, so we have some good ideas. Uh, so we have to take some good steps and see. It's kind of like how we approached Left Behind. Can we tell people a story that's really worth telling, and that's not repeating itself. And if we can, or if we can't, where can we get inspired? What is something that's really going to change us and push storytelling in the medium forward? Uh, so as for whether or not The Last of Us will ever come to the PS4, Druckmann believes it's something where we can have a feel of where demand is and where our time is best spent. It's something that we'll figure out as we move forward. So, you know, worth noting that for a AAA developer, Naughty Dog is still pretty small. Um, They've basically got two teams. One of them is the Last of Us team, and then one of them is the next-gen Uncharted team, which was announced right around the PS4 launch. I think it was actually at the PS4 launch that they announced that. Um, and then the other one is the Last of Us team, who are presumably now free and looking into making a new game or, you know, making a second Last of Us or whatever kind of floats their boat right now. Um, so, it's interesting that they've kind of 
gone back on that, like, we're never going to make a sequel thing, and said, well, maybe, like, we could make one. If they are to make a sequel, though, they have already said that it would not star Joel or Ellie, which is nice. I think that story wrapped up really nicely, despite, um, you know, my opinions about the actual gameplay of the game. I think it was a great end to a story. Speaking of Sony, but on the completely opposite end of the news spectrum, if you are in Italy and you pre-order Infamous Second Son from GameStop, you can receive an exclusive GameStop glow-in-the-dark condom, or I guess a pack of condoms, and also a can of Red Bull, in case your dick wasn't glowing enough. Um, this is probably the weirdest pre-order bonus I've ever seen. Um, they've got a box of, it, you know, it's all in Italian, but... Una scatola di profilatici fluorescenti. A box of condoms that glow in the dark. Two cans of Red Bull in this weird little box with the game. Uh, so, that's really weird. <laughs> and, um... We've got that article again on GameShampoo.com slash magazine. And I guess if your plans for late March include getting all hyped up on Red Bull, playing Infamous Second Son, and then sticking it to something, pre-order a GameStop Italy. I don't know how many... I feel like that's a pretty, pretty thin swath of people that, that encompasses, but maybe, maybe Italy's weird like that. I don't know. Batman Arkham Origins devs have announced that they have no intentions of fixing bugs with the game, including a, an infinite falling bug that I myself am suffering from and have not been able to work around for the last, like, three or four months. Um, and instead, they're going to be focusing entirely on putting out paid DLC for the game. So, hey, we're not going to fix our broken game, but we are going to let you pay more for it. Uh, the team is currently working hard on the upcoming story DLC, and currently there are no plans for releasing another, another patch to address the issues that have been reported on the forums a community, rant, community manager wrote on the forums. If we do move forward with creating a new patch, it will try to address the progression blocking bugs for players, not the minor glitches that do prevent one from continuing to play. The issues that are not progression blockers will unfortunately no longer be addressed. We apologize for any inconvenience this has caused some of you, and want to thank you for being patient. <laughs> so, which is a weird statement, because it's like, thank you for being patient, continue to be patient, because your problems will never be fixed. <laughs> which is weird. So they're not guaranteeing a patch at all, and even if there is a patch, it'll only fix the bugs that break the game outright. DLC is the priority, and that's pretty scummy. Not that I necessarily lay the blame at the developers or anything, like it's probably a combination of like developer and publisher interests and just having to move forward and make new Batman games and whatever, but like no matter how you slice it, that is crappy news. Okay, and finally, we have details on this year's Call of Duty game, although they are scant. We are expecting the usual May, like early May, late April announcement. But for now, we know that Sledgehammer Games, not Treyarch or Infinity Ward, is developing 2014's Call of Duty game, and the Call of Duty series will move to a three-year cycle as opposed to the usual two-year cycle, which will now go... Uh, you know, starting this year, it'll go Sledgehammer, Treyarch, Infinity Ward, back to Sledgehammer, which gives each developer three years to work on their game. Sledgehammer is approaching this as a next-gen first development, Activision told IGN. Obviously, in the console transition year, anyone who developed a cross-generational genera game last year had to deal with the fact that the technology of the next-gen platforms was still coming into focus and changing quite a bit during the development process. Now that we have the next-gen hardware out in the marketplace and solid, that is our primary development. So, um, you know, last-gen will probably be developed in a different studio in-house somewhere at Activision, 
it's not like they're going to be abandoning the 360 and PS3 entirely, but hopefully we'll be seeing some much more significant steps forward this year than we saw last year with Ghosts, which was basically, you know, it was really ugly for a next-gen game for one thing, and it was, you know, more of the same for the most part, aside from the doofy fish AI and the dog animations. Um, so hopefully we'll be seeing something a little more significant in terms of the update from last year to this year. And, you know, I'm just really curious to see what Sledgehammer gets up to in the Call of Duty universe. I, you know, I remember they were originally hired to do a third-person action game, and I highly doubt that's what they're working on now. They ended up helping out with Modern Warfare 3, which I thought was pretty good, um, you know, as far as, like, a simple roller coaster ride of a game goes. But I'd like to see with the next-gen hardware and kind of with, hopefully, a little bit more freedom and probably their own little sub-series branch of Call of Duty, you know, what are these guys capable of? That studio is led by Glenn Schofield, the guy who worked on Dead Space 1, but none of the subsequent Dead Space games. And, uh, you know, that was a really awesome game, and kind of, it kind of looked like EA was going in a cool direction there for a second, where they took this risk on a big horror game. And I feel like it ended up playing out pretty well for them. You know, Dead Space has become a pretty large series. Um, and the first game was awesome. So hopefully we could see a little bit of that kind of, not necessarily like sci-fi, but at least just different than what we've been seeing kind of direction for Call of Duty. That would be nice. Uh, so that's the news for the last week. Let's get into some of the upcoming stuff. Uh, Strider, as I mentioned earlier, is coming out on February 18th, which is this upcoming Tuesday. And that's going to be on Steam as well as Xbox 360 and PS3. Uh, no next-gen version as far as I'm aware, and that it's going to cost $15, and we will have a review of Strider this week. Um, I believe something else is coming out on the 18th as well, and um, let me just hop over to Steam and check that, but on Friday the 21st, uh, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is coming out on the Wii U exclusively, so... I uh, look forward to both of those games, and some uh, coverage of both. And now we're on Steam, and we've got the Coming Soon page. Ah, okay, Ikaruga is coming out on February 18th for Steam. That game was greenlit, finally, and, um, yeah, it's the first time, as far as I'm aware, that it's going to be released outside of the GameCube, and I want to say the Dreamcast, maybe? Not completely sure. Um... So Ikaruga is on the 18th, as well as NASCAR 14, and Banished, which is a city-building strategy game. And then, of course, Strider. Uh, Hexels Plus is coming to Steam on the 19th, along with 99 Levels to Hell, which is a platform action shooter kind of game. And, uh, as is all the rage, it naturally has roguelike mechanics. Go, go, Nippon, my first trip to Japan, uh, is... Certainly interesting sounding. This week, you, the week you spend in Japan will certainly be memorable, three exclamation points. Get a taste for the foreign travel offered by printed guidebooks. Enjoy a tour around Japan from the comfort of your own home. That, that sounds very interesting. Uh, Beat Blasters 3 is coming out on the 21st as well. Welcome to acapella. When Joey and Gina arrive in the musically starved town, the outlawed groovy tunes... A chance encounter with the music-hating, tyrannical ruler of the town and local butcher, which is fucking creepy, sends them flying. So basically, it's Footloose the video game. Oh man, Rambo the video game is coming out on the 21st. Wow, that's, I did not know that was coming out this week. That's fantastic. This game sure looks like something. If you've seen uh, any of those trailers where the Rambo that looks like he's made out of some kind of laminated meat that somebody punched a lot of dents into, uh, just does all this crazy glitchy stuff, then this is that game. It is coming out on Steam as well as current gen consoles, Xbox 360, PS3, uh, this week, this Friday, apparently. Did not know that. 
and uh, there's looks like there's no price point set for it yet either. So that is certainly interesting. <laughs> I did not know that was coming out so soon. So that's the upcoming stuff on Steam this week. Not a lot coming out aside from that, although there will probably be the usual surprise or two. We had WazHack, or WazHack, I'm not sure what, how to pronounce that exactly. Magic's Photo Story 2014 Deluxe, Dusty Revenge Co-op Edition, Home Sheep Home 2, Sea Rush Journal, Card City Nights, Q and Star and Arbitrary Love, and Girls Like Robots all released last, uh, last week. And we had no idea that stuff was coming, so, um, there's a lot of surprises on Steam from the indie developers, and that's always really nice to see. So look out for all that stuff, as well as all the stuff that we just announced. Um, as for week-long sales, the Flat Out series is on sale, Deponia is on sale for 75% off, Flat Out is 75% off as well. Uh, new card game is not included in that Flat Out bundle, despite it kind of being a continuation of those ideas. Um, and from the same developer. Post Mortem is on sale for 75% off. Day One Gary's Incident is 80% off. Um, you know, wonder, really wonder how well that game did after that whole snafu with Total Biscuit. Silent Storm Cold Edition is 75% off. Future Wars is 90% off. Frozen Hearth is 50% off. Abaddon 2 The Corruption is 75% off. And you know, it seems like a lot of the games that go on sale here are like games that you've never heard of and are maybe kind of slightly low rent or whatever, but I do really enjoy the Abaddon series. I think that's a pretty cool role-playing series for people who used to like Baldur's Gate, although it's not nearly as complex. Um, Lucius is another interesting game that is 75% off this week. Arc Clash Legacy is 60% off. Savant Ascent is 50% off at 99 cents. Type Rider is off 50 for, is off 50 percent. Urban Trial Freestyle, which is um, kind of a Kiedoe Trials game, is uh, 75 percent off. Still Life, which looks a lot like a ripoff of Half Life, I'm not, I'm not really sure what these games are, but they are 75 percent off. Storm Frontline Nation is 75 percent off. Binary Domain is 75% off, and I might finally buy that. Steam World Dig is 50% off. I recommend that game. It's pretty cool. It's only 5 bucks right now. Um, Cargo Commander is 80% off. Alpha Protocol is 75% off for $375. Also kind of like that game, despite its crazy jankiness for, you know, less than 4 bucks. If you like RPGs and you spec your character the right way, uh, you can definitely have a good time with that game. Raise Supreme 3D, which is a 3D modeling tool, is 33% off, and that's it for the weekly sales, which lasts uh, starting today, one week. Um, and I guess, yeah, um, that's about it on Steam, as far as I can tell. So that's it for the upcoming stuff, and um, you know, that's it for the news that happened last week. Be sure to stay tuned for more upcoming news. We've got Donkey Kong, we've got Strider, and I'm sure there will be plenty of other newsworthy stuff happening in a couple days. So uh, check out GameShampoo.com slash magazine. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you next week.